Shaming is a solution to the multipolar trap. And when I say multipolar trap, this is a multiplayer prisoner's dilemma that captures a lot of different situations. And the, the basic situation I'm most interested in with multipolar traps is social media companies that do the unethical thing, such as cause harm to the, the mental health of the population, harm to the stability of democracy. And they do that because they know that if they don't do that, if they don't create an addictive product, then they will be competed out of the market. And in five years or 10 years, when all is said and done, the only social media companies left will be those that created the addictive product that harmed mental health. And so every social media company uh, CEO says, well, at least I know I'm more ethical than those other guys. So I'm just going to do the addictive thing because I should be in this game. It's better that I'm at the top of this game than those other unethical players are at the top doing what I think they're going to do. So that's the scenario I'm most interested in, but you see this all over the place. And I mean, obviously with green technology and with green um, effects on the environment, companies will uh, engage in the same exact multipolar trap that maybe they would like to be environmentally friendly, but they think they will be competed out of the market if they don't at least do some things that harm the environment. So all of them end up harming the environment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'd like to talk about in this video is the people who do the shaming, they actually have a good evolutionary reason for doing that. Because shaming does sometimes solve multipolar traps. So I want to think through what's the game theory of that. And then why, why are so many of these shaming campaigns and people who may even have genuine values behind their reason for shaming, why do some of these sort of spiral out of control and take a life of their own online? And I think probably the classic example from the evolution of mankind was when people had a big meal, the personally advantageous thing to do would be to eat as much as you could of that meal and eat, to eat more than everybody else in the tribe because then you're stronger, you're more likely to survive and reproduce. But of course, tribes where they shared the food equally were more likely to succeed as a whole group. So I think if we ask the question, why are humans so responsive to shaming? I think one of the answers is in tribes where they had a genetic strong response to shaming, those tribes were better able to cooperate in the face of these kinds of prisoners' dilemmas and multipolar traps. And actually, these are also called collective action problems. That's another name for these. And I, I think those tribes probably outcompeted the other tribes that weren't so responsive to shaming. So I think there is a good reason we... we we really react and perhaps overreact to shaming. And it was to get around these multipolar trap situations. Well, if you fast forward to the present environment, I think you can still get a benefit out of shaming situations in some cases. Like we might imagine if you could actually sustain a cooperative equilibrium boycotting a company that did something antisocial, like let's just say boycotting companies that had really anti-environmental policies. If you could sort of shame the whole population into not buying from those companies, that would actually lead to a cooperative equilibrium where companies are green. But the problem here, well, well, there's going to be three problems. And the first of these is that once you implement a shaming strategy in order to tr try to move the population towards cooperation, um, the problem is that strategy can take a life of its own. And a lot of times, secondary things become representative of the cooperative strategy when they're really not. And when I think about this, I think about people wearing like a I love uh, green technology pin on their shirt. Like, does that do anything for the environment? Probably not. Um, it signals that you're sort of supportive of this uh, situation where you're going to shame people who buy environmentally unclean products. 
but it may not actually do that much overall. And so if the battle and the shaming sort of energy gets channeled toward the wearing of the green pin or, you know, some other secondary trait that's not about are you actually, you know, buying the product from the ungreen company, then you're moving farther and farther away from actually enforcing the cooperative equilibrium you want. And there's just this habit for things to evolve among human groups where um, they can evolve farther and farther away from the original problem you're trying to solve. Now, the second problem here with shaming as a strategy for enforcing uh, cooperative equilibrium in multipolar traps is that people can react very negatively to shaming. And that negative reaction, that can take a life of its own. And oftentimes that takes the form of doing the bad thing just to spite those people who are shaming you. Like for this one, I'm imagining a community where there's a problem with littering. So that community might come together and be like, our community is turning into trash. We need to do something about it. And our strategy will be to shame anyone we see throwing trash on the side of the road. So they're trying to counteract the uh, mechanisms that are leading to this uncooperative equilibrium. And I could actually see that working really well in a community. If the whole community agrees, Anytime we see someone littering, we're going to give them the stink eye. And maybe eventually that will actually make the community cleaner. People will realize it's not cool to litter, all of that. So that could actually work with shaming as a strategy here. The problem is with a lot of these things, you're never 100% certain. So I can imagine a situation where you see a uh, a Burger King cup on the side of the road and you're like, you were drinking a Burger King drink last night. Nobody else went to Burger King. That's 15 miles away. You littered. I'm going to shame you. Well, the problem is uh, that could have been the dog took that from the trash. It could have been the wind blew it out of their trash. Like there are legitimate reasons why that Burger King cup might not have been uh, uh, due to that person littering. So if you shame them unfairly, people react really negatively to that, especially if it's really ugly shaming, like you think you're such hot stuff and how do you, you know, you, you, piling on shaming, it's just, it, it can get pretty ugly. And people only have to have that kind of thing happen to them once or maybe, maybe twice before they're starting to be like, this shaming thing is actually worse than the problem it's trying to solve. And so those people may be like, you know what, I'm going to litter just to spite those people who are doing the shaming because that's a worse community problem than the littering. And that can sort of create these two groups, the, the pro-shaming group and the anti-shaming group. And the whole battle becomes about whether, whether or not you should shame people if they litter or if they appear to have littered based on some other evidence. And that, that totally sucks the energy out of the original problem the community was trying to solve. Like you could imagine someone who really cared deeply about having a clean community and they're watching the shamers and they're watching the anti-shamers and they're like, wait a second, uh, can't we just come together and figure out a cooperative solution here rather than create these two factions who are just upset at each other? Um, so, so because there can be this counter reaction to shaming that can actually escalate the original problem sometimes. Now, here's the thing that I think is new to the modern world that's sort of adding to this dilemma, which is an age-old dilemma. It's been there, I'm sure, since the beginning of human beings. But the new problem with technology is that it's interrupting the feedback loop for people to be able to tell if their shaming is actually working. So let's say you are someone who just truly cares about the environment or truly cares about not littering, in which case you might actually want to be someone who says, let's try the shaming strategy in this neighborhood, but let's watch to see if it's working. 
And if it stops working or if it creates a backlash that actually generates more litter, then we need to sort of say, hold it, let's rethink this, let's redo how we're trying to sustain cooperation here. Uh, um, but the problem is online, your news feed is not going to give you accurate information about whether or not there's a backlash. It's not going to give you accurate information about um, the way this whole shaming campaign is evolving. And so if you're one of the ones sort of in the shaming camp, let's try this, maybe it'll solve a problem. You might get a news feed that tells you, yes, people like you who are shaming, you're making the world a better place. Keep going. We're the good people. Those counter reactionaries, they're the bad people. And really the way to squelch this is to, you know, put that little group in their place. And if you genuinely care about the environment and if you believed that was accurate feedback, maybe the right strategy would be to continue to shame. But the problem, of course, is maybe you're not seeing the full extent of the backlash. You're not seeing the full extent of the fact that what you can observe is not equal to environmentally friendly behavior. And maybe the, the companies that are sort of tagged as being environmentally friendly, maybe they just bribed somebody to get that rating. Like maybe it's not actually connected to the environment. So maybe the shaming campaign is just not connected to the thing you want it to be connected to. And you're not going to get that information through social media. You'll just get information that reinforces your own view. So it, it's breaking this feedback loop that the community needs if it's going to tell whether a shaming strategy is working. And I think that broken feedback loop is one of the huge problems we're up against. When we look at the collective action problems, the multipolar trap problems of the modern age.